let's talk about how to analyze our current SharePoint farm using the SharePoint migration assessment tool. Planning is key to a successful data migration to SharePoint Online. The SharePoint migration assessment tool, also known as MAT, is a simple command line tool that scans your farm and will do multiple reports on items that could impact your migration. In every report, it will also provide you links to Microsoft resources on what you should do to overcome those items that will maybe not easily be migrated. To use the SharePoint Migration Assessment Tool, you first need to download it from the Microsoft Download Center on one of the servers of your SharePoint farm. You need to be a local administrator on the server, a farm administrator on the farm, as well as make sure you have full control permissions on all the different service apps as well as web applications. When you download the tool, you will see multiple executables, including SMAT 2010 and SMAT 2013. As the name suggests, the one with 2010 inside is for SharePoint 2010, the one with 2013 inside is for SharePoint 2013. As of August 2018, when this course is being recorded, there is no versions that worked with SharePoint 2007, 2016, or 2019, but maybe this will come in the future, so make sure to check the download page if it's already there. If it's there by the time you listen to this course. When you run the SharePoint Migration Assessment Tool, you will see that it's a command line tool that will give you quick results first on the number of items in each category that could be a blocker. On the screen, you'll notice some of the blockers on my current test farm can be that first of all, I have a custom profile property mapping done in the user profile, and that's not something that you can migrate to Office 365. I also have a list or document library that has incoming email enabled, which is a feature that doesn't exist in Office 365. Next up, I have one large list in my farm, and the large list by definition is one that has over 5,000 items. Other things that I need to be careful of, a list that have managed metadata columns, and you see here I have four of them, so this tells me that I probably will need to migrate my whole managed metadata service application as well, since I seem to have a lot of content that depends on it. Next up, I have 16 publishing pages in five publishing sites. So those are usually supported by in Office 365, but the reason why people used publishing pages and sites in SharePoint on-premises is because they wanted to customize things. So I'll maybe need to look in the report that goes more in detail and look at what they are, see if they're out of the box or they have a lot of customizations made. I also have 15 sites with templates that do not exist in Office 365 anymore. So I will need to look at what those templates are and to what Office 365 site template I can map them with and how I'll map the content since that exact template does not exist anymore. And finally, I have three web application policies. And since web applications do not exist in Office 365, well, I will not be able to migrate them. Other than this display, we also have access to an a lot more detailed file that also gives us the URL to those specific items. We are now in the lab environment and the first thing I have to do is download the SharePoint Migration Assessment Tool. So I will go at the link that's shared in the slides and I will download it. It should only take a few seconds to download, it's not that big of a file. Let me save it. Let's open the folder, unzip it, extract all. Yes, show me the files when they are complete. And there we go, let me open it. And if we log down, as you see, it's really not pretty, really not something that's customer facing. 
it's really for the admins behind. And you see, I have multiple options. I can either run SMAT, SMAT 2010, or SMAT 2013. If you run the 2010 or 2013, as we talked about inside the slides, this is for SharePoint 2013, this is for SharePoint 2010, and this is basically, if you're not sure which one to run, you run this one, it will automatically detect what version of SharePoint you're on and it will run it for you. But since I already know I'm running SharePoint 2013, I will just run SMAT 2013 as an administrator. As you see, because of the resolution for plural site courses in which we have to record, it doesn't actually support, which is really weird for a console application to not support depending on the resolution. But if you're on a really low resolution, you might have this error. So you can either run it in quiet mode or make your resolution larger. So what I will do now is I will actually change the resolution of my screen to something slightly larger. So what this means is that for the rest of the demo, you might not see some parts of the screen, which will be normal. We are now back in the lab. And as you see, you now should see a bit less of my screen than you saw before. But I will make sure that all of the important stuff fix inside the part of the screen that you actually see. So let me run SMAT 2013 again as an administrator. Let me drag this here in the middle. And you see, this might take up to two hours on some environment. So it could actually take a while in order for you to see the reports. There you go. You now at least see the same screenshot as it was on the slides. And you'll see that slowly, one by one, all of the different reports will start appearing. It will say, okay, finish scan work. And sometimes if, for example, for my BCS applications, which is the third one from the top, it says, unable to locate business data catalog service, which is normal because I do not have the BCS service application running inside my farm. So for some of them, if you have that service application running, you're probably not an administrator or you are missing some rights. But if you don't have it installed, don't worry if you see things like that as it's normal to not be able to locate it if it doesn't exist. Now I will just pause the recording again until all of the different tests have finished. And after they're all done, we're going to be looking at the results. So the migration has been already about 40 minutes since I started it with you previously. As you see, it's still running. But what I want to show you while it's still running is the logs and where you can actually see information about the stuff that it reports on. If you look inside the folder from where we ran SMAT 2013 earlier, under log, scanner reports, you will see different CSV reports for the different categories where it found content. So for example, let me open email enabled list. As you see, if you open the CSV file in notepad, it is not that pretty. However, let me open it in Excel for you guys. I cannot, or at least you should not install Office on a SharePoint server. So I have copied locally and I will open it for you. Over here, the email enabled list details CSV. So you see, I have the site ID at the top. I have the site URL. I have the web application and so on. And then I can really have details about the content database how many items it has, as well as the web URL and the list title, list URL and everything. So really it gives us all of the information that we need in order to look at those different potential blockers and try to solve them before we actually start the migration. Here is another one, the large list detail CSV which again is one that I simply copied the report from and open it with Excel on my local computer. You see, we have the direct list URL, how many items it has, what is the content type, and all of the different details that we need to have about that list. So then we can decide if we migrate it or not. 